Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my Daily Dose with Tim. Today is season two, episode 60. Yeah, you heard that right. We are finally at the season finale episode of season two. That took a while, actually. And uh, as you can see, I basically titled this last episode as what's actually happened in the last 232 days since season two, episode 59. Well, well, let me tell you, and this is why I do want today to be a bit more of a dialogue and more of a conversation as well, because in the last seven months, seven plus months now, so much has happened. And as we all know, a lot of things are happening with the economy, with interest rates, with the real estate markets, especially here in Canada, and just life in general is very different, especially for most of us thinking that it's post-pandemic days and uh, many of us are sort of pivoting again. I know that was sort of the, one of the catchphrases or one of the catchwords of the year 2020. And it's starting to happen again because we're seeing definitely a lot of people doing what's, <laughs> what we would call revenge traveling right now. And so I'm all for it because as you know, one of my biggest whys when, uh, when it comes to creating financial freedom is to be able to travel however I want, whenever I want, and with whoever I want. And so I kudos to you if you are actually already going out there. And I do believe that traveling feeds the soul. So I'm very happy if you get to do that. However, if you haven't had the chance to yet, that's totally fine. It doesn't matter. You make your own decisions in life and uh, you decide what is best for you at this point. Now, I do want to share a little bit about uh, what's been happening over the last seven plus months here. And this is probably one of the biggest reasons why I haven't been able to make a, make an episode. As many of you know, I am an investor first and foremost, and then I'm also a real estate investing mentor, trainer. And those are the things that I focus on the most, especially in the last seven months, we've, ha we've had to help a lot of people get started in investing in real estate. And especially the last few months also here is to help people pivot and make sure that they are making the right decisions. So in the last seven months, I'm just going to kind of think back chronologically. First of all, Trust Your Talent Academy, we celebrated our two full years back in December. Every December, we bring the entire team together and we have our annual team meeting. And these team meetings, um, it's training based, it's kind of everybody catching up. However, for us, really, it's a chance for all of us to get together and share the learnings and plan for the next year also. Now, um, it's every year we sort of have a different theme and for the year 2022 we have titled it the best it's yet to come because we really do believe truly in terms of the mission that we're on and the mission that we're on is to help people create financial freedom and create financial independence now the official mission statement though is creating financial independence one person at a time and i think in case this is not very obvious for a lot of people is the fact that I have never ever been one to always say financial freedom, financial freedom, because to me, that has become a lot more of a marketing phrase, a buzz phrase, rather than people actually knowing how to hit it and why they actually want it. And the other thing also is I am not exactly pro firing your bosses all the time, simply because of the fact that I do believe that some of us, we've literally invested time, tear, money, sweat, and to get to where we are in our career today. And you may actually love what you do. And so what you do realize is that what I'm really pro about is I'm pro multiple streams of income. I am pro people following their passions, their dreams, their skill sets, and whatever drives them, makes them happy, makes them get out of bed and makes them go, you know, I feel like I've actually contributed to my own life and the lives of others today with the work that I put in. And so this is why I always say that, yeah, you know what, if one of your goals is to fire your bosses and be a full-time investor like I did, great. However, that's the thing. I actually didn't get the joy of firing my bosses, even though I really did want to. I mean, I really enjoyed the J-O-B that I had that my just over broke <laughs> from 12 years ago. However, I did not enjoy the politics and the lack of leadership in terms of where I was working at. And so that was one of my main reasons why. But then as 
you know, if you've been following my daily dose with Tim, you understand that my biggest reason why initially was to give myself the time and the money freedom so that I could actually take care of my health. Over the last seven months, I realized that I have to, I've had to remind people um, in conversation simply because I know when people look at me these days and I share with them the fact that I've had three, uh, I've had three heart attacks. I've had one major depression where I was, you know, wanting to take my own life at one point. And also every single day I have to manage and live with five different autoimmune disorders. None of those things sound like very happy things. Um, yet, you know, that really formed a very fundamental purpose in terms of why I do what I do these days. And the other thing is I respond to people by saying, yes, this is what time and money freedom has allowed me to do is the fact that in the last 10 plus years, I've had the opportunity to really focus on taking care of my health and whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, and even spiritually too. And uh, financially, we continue to grow as a business, as investors, uh, beyond the real estate investing world. And so what I really stand for is to create the financial security and the financial happiness. And speaking of financial security and happiness, and that's something that I think a lot of e investors even today are worrying about um, simply because of the fact that the world's changing, inflation's gone through the roof. As a result, cost of borrowing is usually pretty horrendous. And uh, I just want to share this with everyone is the fact that I've tipped basically gone through this is what I call my two and a half uh, economic downturn at this point, because I will boldly say that we are officially in a recession right here in Canada. I mean, in different countries, regardless of where you're watching this from, you might be experiencing a different reality at the moment. Regardless, all the telltale signs and all the indicators are saying that we are officially in a recession. And this is inevitable because everything is cyclical. You know, when something goes up, it comes down and then it'll go back up again. It'll come back down again. And that's totally fine. However, again, for some of those who are just what I would typically call real estate collectors, this is when they're going to start to get into trouble. And so I do feel bad for those people simply because of the fact that I understand nobody ever really set out to acquire properties and wanting to leverage to create long-term wealth to experiencing even more financial hardship from it. However, this is what happens when you're buying for buying sake. And so right now I will, I will say this, what we're doing or what I'm doing myself, and there's no right or wrong answer here still, simply because everybody's financial situation is a little different. Uh, we are first and foremost going through some refinancing processes on some of the projects and properties that we've acquired over the last two to four years right now, simply because of the fact that, like I said, this is my two and a half downturn at, since I started my career, simply because of the fact that number one, it's, the time, if there's ever, ever a time that you will want to have some cash on hand, this would be it because this would basically help you uh, carry you through the rainy days. And um, the other thing is, yes, it does semi-contradict a lot of the things that I believe in or how I operate as an investor is that there should be no idle money left here. And so depending on your personal risk tolerance, mine has been uh, has been going up more and more over the years as I feel more confident and acquire more knowledge and skills and experience in what I'm doing. So the way I, that I would approach this would be a little different from, I, I would say, most investors. However, regardless, yes, I am refinancing, keeping some cash on hand. However, I'm still actively making offers, acquiring properties. Now, here is the interesting thing is the fact that I've been actually just recently started sharing at the last, well, by recently, I mean, the last few days, actually, simply because this is all very new right now, is the fact that for the last about year and a half now, we've already pivoted to focus on a market right outside of Canada. And that's uh, in our neighboring country called the United States of America. <laughs> and uh, the reason why we started doing that is because of the fact that when COVID first started, we were actively acquiring in Canada. And then after that, we decided that, you know what, we've hit our threshold because funny enough, I actually was able to go back to one of the episodes and one of the public uh, talks that I've done. And I, did actually predict that COVID is going to be one of the best opportunities because with crisis come with uh, come opportunities or cri rather 
crisis will create the right opportunities for the educated and the professional investors because we've learned how to spot opportunities when nobody else can. And also, as you probably remember, one of my favorite quotes is from Warren Buffett. And he says, when others are fearful, be greedy. And when others are greedy, be fearful. And at the beginning of COVID, obviously, most people are fearful. And they're sitting on the sidelines, waiting and waiting and waiting. And before, before you know it, everything is shooting up. And so as soon as that started happening in the Canadian marketplace, we decided that we wanted to expand our market reach and market options once again down south, because that's how we typically have been hedging against our risk as well. And the reason why I do that is simply because um, I'll give you an example. Here's an analogy that I typically use is think about Starbucks or whatever, you know, whatever international brand that you recognize. And uh, I'm a big Starbucks fan because I always call that, you know, wherever there's a Starbucks, I have an office there because that's my mobile office. Uh, every city that I go to, every town that I go to, I usually meet my power team members, I meet my clients, I meet my investors at Starbucks. So what I mean by that is if you think about it, not every single Starbucks is profitable. I know, shocking, right? To some of you, maybe, because <laughs> it seems like every single Starbucks it, it has got the license to print money. It's not really the case. And again, COVID actually proved that because if you think about it, I mean, just look it up, just Google it. Look at how many Starbucks were shut down during 2020 and 2021. So that should tell you something. But the whole point is not every single Starbucks is profitable. However, as a whole company, they are and they remain profitable through performance, regardless of value going up or going down or staying sideways for a long time. And that's the exact same approach that we take when it comes to going into investing and acquiring properties. Because as I keep saying this, we acquire properties like a business and very much like a business at the end of the day, every single property that you hold needs to be in the green and so if they're in the red usually that's a chance for a performance review it's not always to say that okay you know what it's in the red so we're going to get rid of it we're going to sell it right now that's not always the case okay the idea is that it offers an opportunity for every single one of us to do a performance review to see if there's actually a chance to improve the performance of certain properties so that we can continue to grow our business as a whole and in this case our business is our real estate portfolio and so over the last few weeks, and um, I will also share this with you because at the beginning of this year, I turned 40. And so turning 40 actually meant that I wanted to give myself a very, very nice trip, nice present. And the present, you know, like I said, one of my biggest, highest values is traveling. And what we ended up doing is that we actually started out with going to Florida, going to Miami, going to Orlando, going on a couple of Caribbean cruises, and then flying over to LA. And I actually was able to check off one of my bucket list items ever since I was a kid is for those of you who are old enough and have watched the movie Pretty Woman, remember the hotel that they stayed at? The Beverly Wilshire? And that is the Four Seasons Hotel now. And I don't know if it was actually a Four Seasons back in the 90s or the, back in 1989 when they were filming it. However, I got to realize one of my bucket list items, which is staying at the Beverly Wilshire in a suite. And we stayed there uh, for about half a week. And then we also stayed at the Fairmont Century Plaza. So, I mean, you know what? That's my value system. I love luxury travels and I'm not a good camper nor a big camper myself. So this is where I get to collect my experiences and I absolutely love it. And so after the four seasons in Beverly Hills, we actually moved over to the Fairmont Century Plaza. Look it up. It's an amazing, amazing hotel as well. Now it's run by the Fairmont and uh, also stayed at another gorgeous suite there and just really got to experience what life is like. And as one of my um, 
wealthy friends jokes is, you know, are you done living like the rich and the famous? <laughs> it really wasn't about that. It's just that I know for me, that was always a bucket list item for me. And um, it's what feeds my soul and it's what drives me and it's what makes me happy. So everybody's got to find uh, their own things to make them happy as well. And then after that, we actually flew over to um, Oahu. So Hawaii and uh, stayed at the Ritz Carlton on Waikiki, as well as the Four Seasons in Koalina as well. And um, the whole point about sharing this with you is the fact that I never really realized, you know, how how far I've come. And that's the thing. I mean, I've been saying this for the last couple of years now. However, it really took this trip to make me realize the fact that. It's really, really, and it's it's that one of those uh, one of those sayings, and I believe that it, it was actually. I'm, I'm just gonna quote Bill Gates. Most people underestimate. Sorry, most people overestimate what they can accomplish in one year, and most people under estimate what they can achieve in 10 years time. And for me, this was definitely a huge aha moment because yes, I started investing in 2010 as a professional investor. If you count me being an accidental landlord, I actually started investing in the year 2009. And so with that said, <laughs> turning 40 was very different from turning 30 because when I turned 30, as I mentioned earlier, I was actually battling through a very, very serious clinical depression. And I remember, and, uh, and you know what, I, I want to put this out there, you know, if you're not in a good space, make sure you seek help. However, I want to be true and authentic to my story while, while I'm sharing this with you, because I literally turned 30 in bed crying and uh, was depressed and actually suicidal. And so I remember on this trip, on my turning 40 trip, one morning I woke up and um, I was able to just really take a deep breath and think about how far I've come as a person also and how grateful I am and the fact that, and that I never, never let go. I never gave up. And, um, you know, some people ask me how I found the courage and the strength to do that. And the way I, the best way I can describe it now, because I really don't know. So the best way I can describe it now is I remember during the darkest times, I always, always had this really faint picture of little, a little candle, a teeny tiny candle in the dark that just burning away. And to me, that was very symbolic. It's, it's, I look at it as there is just that little light and that little light of hope inside of me. And I just never wanted that light to really go away, even though I was thinking silly thoughts and um, just very, very grateful. And this is what happened. And um, I was on the road for about five and a half weeks, lived very, very lavishly. And I'm very, very grateful that we're able to do that. And um that really gave me a, a huge aha moment of how quickly life can change. However, you also need to learn the fact that um, you got to stick to something and uh, put all your heart and effort and time and energy into it so that you can create the life that you really, truly want. And that also gave me a very newfound and renewed energy and passion for uh, contributing to the Trust Talent community because again i really don't stand for real estate investing i don't i hope you know that now watching this what i really stand for is financial education and fi increasing people's financial literacy because real estate is cyclical it's going to come and go and it's going to go up it's going to go down people are, you know the uneducated they're going to get hurt when the times are bad because all they're doing is what i call buy rent and pray which i'm sure you probably recall vaguely from one of the episodes or a few of the episodes rather and um, that's not how we do things and so if fast forward in a few months later now is things are changing because during COVID, obviously, especially in North America, the governments were printing money like crazy. And uh, people are surprised that what's happening now is happening, meaning inflation, first of all, second of all, interest rates as a result. And in my opinion, people really shouldn't be surprised, especially if they're educated or have some sort of financial education under their belt, because that is how the government needs 
uh, how the government works and what they need, need to do to balance things, uh, to keep things moving. So in a way, frankly, I don't blame them. I really don't. And does it create some challenges right now for investors and as an investor myself? Absolutely. Like I said, we are refinancing some of the projects that we acquired in the last two to four years. And we're looking at number one, very, very behind timelines. So most lenders are taking forever right now. And some files are taking as long as four or five months at the moment to have the refinance come through. So that's really frustrating. And so what that also means is that if you're understanding what's happening, then you understand to not overcommit yourself into new projects as well, first of all. And second of all, when the money comes back, what you are, what are you doing with that money? That's also really, really, really important. Important. And third of all, when we're doing the refinance, even though we're getting quotes like 7%, between 7 and 8% right now, and these are uh, for multifamilies and for single families, I'm getting quotes between 6.5 all the way to 7.75. Uh, 7 and in some cases, um, if we are not going with the model line or A lenders, we're getting quotes in 8.99 all the way to 9.75 in first position. So I understand these numbers are very, very scary for a lot of people if they're not sticking to the fundamentals. And so this is something that a lot of us really need to pay attention to. And for those of you who are, and um, I don't you know, mean to offend you. However, if you've been collecting properties for the sake of collecting properties over the, la the last few years, and now you're sort of in this position where, you know, you kind of got in in a variable and the rates are going up, it's eating away at your cash flow or you, it's killing your performance even further because you weren't even cash flowing well to begin with. Now it's a really, really good time for you to speak either to a mortgage broker or better yet, speak to a real estate investing mentor who's actually gone through the ups and downs. Okay. And so that's what you got to do. You got to plan for it. And so with that said, like I said, some of the money that we've been taking out, we're actually reinvesting as well. So I'm still actively looking at opportunities, looking at deals to analyze and looking at properties to acquire in the United States. And here's the thing in the last six weeks, almost now, I've been saying five weeks for a while. So in the last almost six weeks at this point, I've, I've had 12 offers. I put out 15 offers and 12 of them got rejected. One just got accepted and two are still waiting to hear back. And here's the thing. I've spoken to wholesalers. I've spoken to other investors. I've spoken to realtors and other market, uh, uh, other professionals and investors in the market, the different marketplaces. And, uh, so these markets are Phoenix, Arizona, Hawaii, uh, Indiana, and uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, New York, Georgia, and Alabama, and uh, Orlando, Florida. And so all these different markets, I've spoken to countless, countless people and uh, made like I said, 15 offers, 12 fell through. And the, when, when, <laughs> when the first six fell through, I actually caught myself thinking, oh my God, I wish something would just go through now. Maybe I'm being too strict about my criteria. And then I realized, no, 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 that's me letting emotions get in the way at this point. And this is what we always say. One of the biggest rules about investing, especially if you're investing for a living and for cash flow and for, again, long-term success, period. You want to make sure that you actually don't compromise your numbers, your criteria, your fundamentals, just because you want something to go through. And that's the funny thing. 12 years later, I still caught myself feeling that way at one point in time. And then I have to quickly stop myself and go, no, because... The moment I compromise is the moment that I actually put myself and in some cases, my OPM in jeopardy. And so I soldiered on. Six got rejected, the seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, and finally the 13th. And you know we call it lucky, thir lucky 13, even though it's not a lucky number for a lot of people. However, the 13th offer finally came through. So after a dozen of rejections. Of course, it didn't feel good. Of course, you kind of just want something to go through. However, again, 
An educated investor is one that is also patient and understands that we need to stick to the fundamentals. And so I'm really, really happy to share that um, the 13th offer actually is a portfolio takeover. There are a total of 15 units that we're going to be picking up. And uh, most of that actually I've negotiated for vendor take back or seller financing or owner financing, depending on which phrase you are uh, the most familiar with. And so that's really what's been happening over the last little bit. And uh, from the trust your talent side of things, we uh, decided to offer another U.S. investing program this year. So for the second year in a row, because the first time we offered it was last July. So the second round is going to start this July as well. And um, I realized it's really no different than the last couple of years. All of a sudden, it seems like multifamily investing is the way to go during the pandemic. And I actually really don't understand why. I mean, I get it theoretically speaking because you know a lot of people they do really good with sales and it's the catch it's the catchphrase it's the buzzword no different than when burr first came out all of a sudden it was the burr strategy and i keep saying this burr is not a strategy burr is a process and however burr became a very popular marketing phrase and so you know three four years ago all of a sudden there's a lot of people fly by nights teaching burr strategy and then two years ago lots of people started teaching um multifamily investing and now all of a sudden because for canadians especially that uh things are not going well in this country and we don't have a lot of markets to really pick from. Now, all of a sudden, it seems like the spotlight got put on international investing. However, I keep saying this, investing beyond borders, it's not, it's, it should not be a, oh God, my home market is not doing well. Let me see what else is out there now. It should be a fundamental approach so that through the SMP process, you can actually allow yourself to stretch and extend beyond borders and go to any market that will serve you because not everybody likes to do deals in a down market. I don't mind doing deals in a down market because honestly, in a down market, if you know what you're doing, that's when you can make the most and quickest money when the moment the market turns. And sideway markets, it's really not as fun because yes, you might be cash flowing. However, I know some of us, we're still kind of hoping and praying that there's going to be some natural market lift. And when you're in a sideways market, like my home market in Alberta, for six years at a time, I've never experienced that. However, we were still making great money during those, those, uh, those six years, simply because of the fact that we understand how to utilize different strategies and going into different uh, pockets of the market to really continue to operate as a business. So what I really want to share is please, 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 if you're taking real estate investing seriously, or better yet, if you're taking financial education seriously, or if you are taking building your financial future seriously, please do not write the train of buzzwords. So investing in any other countries, for example, lately, I'm also hearing a lot about Costa Rica. And that's great if you are able to sustain it and if that actually fits your personal goal. And this is why I keep saying we invest with an end goal in mind and everybody's goal is going to be a little bit different. And if you remember the different income buckets, meaning your circle of wealth or your wheel of wealth, your strategy should be dictated by your goals and how you feed your income buckets. Not so much the fact that, oh my God, buy here because it is a little cheaper right now and it's affordable. Again, that makes you a buyer, not an investor, because an investor focuses on what my money is going to do for me, not just in the long term, but also right now. And so that's the thing. I'm seeing a lot of people get trapped again, and it's, it's, it's very unfortunate. However, I just, you know, this is what I stand for, and so this is what I'm going to say is the fact that Right now, I will unapologetically, and for some of you, this may sound like my ego talking. Sure, whatever you want to peg it as. I, I've been saying this now for the last few months is, you know, what is actually recession proof? Financial education. Because too many people are parking money for the sake of parking money. Too many people are buying properties for the sake of buying properties. Too many people are chasing fats 
chasing trends on buying properties. This is not TikTok. You don't just chase trends. This is your hard earned money with your sweat and tears sometimes that you need to grow and protect at the same time. So do yourself a favor, make sure you get yourselves properly educated so that you don't make the wrong decisions in times like this. And so this is really what's been happening over the last little bit. And we're super excited about the, uh, the US program that's going to be happening again, uh, especially within the Treasure Talent commun uh, community because I really do fundamentally believe that investing beyond borders is not an if and when, it is, well, let's make sure we learn so that we have that extra tool in our tool, be our tool belt when we need to grab it. And now is the time to grab it so that you're not trapped within just one country and a few select markets that you can work in. So that's, um, you know, I, there's so many things that I still wanna share. So. I think this is going to be it for season two and uh, for season three, I know I've got quite a few different ideas and a lot of different suggestions from, from all of you. And to those of you who have been following me for two years now on my Daily Dose with Tim, I really, really, really thank you. And I know many of you have messaged me in the last six months, especially asking me when, um, when I'm going to continue my daily dose with Tim. So I really, truly, genuinely appreciate your support. And I, I'm just beyond grateful that you're identifying and resonating with my message and with my personal mission as well. So best of luck to everybody. And uh, remember when I say luck, just like you know, when people say, oh my God, you're so lucky. Well, that's because people did not see me put in the hours and the tears and the sweat and the money and everything that went into creating the results that I have today. However, remember, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So spend the time to prepare yourself so that you can see opportunities that other people don't see. So best of luck to all of you. And I will see you back here for season three. And uh, make sure you Look out for, um, I, mean, I, mean, I don't want to say marketing materials because I think I'm just going to pop up and be like, hey, welcome to season three, episode one next time. However, there will be another general direction in terms of what the next season is going to look like. And uh, I'm you know, going to kind of keep that a little bit for now. And you just have to, you're just going to have to find out for yourself. So with that said, I want to thank all of you one last time for helping me finish season two, episode 60. And I know one of the most popular episodes uh, for the season was actually see, uh, episode 56. It talks about the real estate cycle. So if you want to rewatch anything, um, after this one, I would definitely encourage you to re-watch season two, episode 56, especially if you're a property collector and or a real estate investor right now. So enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, I will see you back here for season three.